Welcome back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Mohoz, Professor Kafaras, and uh, from the Afritech University of Aeronautical Sciences. We are now proceeding to the next stage, gas turbine engine combustion section. Previously, we looked at the compressor section, we looked at the construction or design. So compressor section, we saw that we have axial and centrifugal compressors and they define the structure and design of the gas turbine. So we move to the combustion section, that's the power plant section. So <coughs> the combustion section houses the processes by which the energy contained within the fuel or air is released. The combustion section is located between the compressor diffuser and the turbine section the next step i think you can check you see where the combustor is oh the combustor is here this is a compressor and uh, the diffuser and this is the exhaust so we we'll proceed to so you can briefly see we have fresh air coming into the compressor and then we have the combustor here, we have the turbine, then we have the exhaust gases moving out, then work out. We see the power getting out. Then we see two from the compressor goes to the combustor, then to the three going to the turbine. There is this link. This one is because the turbine turns the compressor. The compressor is driven by the turbines. So we see the fuel coming in into the combustion together with the fresh air. That is, we say that the purpose of the combustion section is the energy contained within the fuel or air is released. It is ignited and then it releases the energy. So the primary function of the combustion section is to burn the air-fuel mixture adding heat energy to air. We burn the fuel air mixture by adding heat energy into the air. And the second task is to provide the correct fuel stroke air mixture for efficient burning. So the combustion section makes sure the correct fuel air mixture is there for efficient burning. And at the same time, it burns the fuel air mixture by adding heat energy to the air. All combustion chambers contain the following elements. So we see the main components of the combustion chamber. We have an outer casing, we have a perforated inner liner, we have a fuel injection system, we have a means of ignition, and we have a fuel drainage system. We shall see the importance of each part of these. So from a diagram we can see we have a primary flow, we have a secondary flow. We see here the fuel air mixture coming into it. We see here the sources of the flame, that is the means of ignition. Then we see the fuel injection system, we see how the fuel is coming into. And then we see the combustion taking place, we see the oxygen going. So this briefly how the section of the combustion chamber is. We see the outer casing. That is somewhere here. So if you can see this one, oh Jesus Christ. We see this one, the outer casing, that is the outer casing. And we again see the perforated inner liner. Then we see the fuel injection system, this one by which the fuel is put into. Then we see the means of ignition, then we see the drainage system. That is where the fuel goes out. From there, the excess fuel is drained out because it cannot stay in there in the combustion chamber. It will cause some dangerous effects. We shall see in future as we are continuing to start about the gas turbine engine. So types of combustion chamber. See, we have very many combustion chambers. You can see this one. This one is a combustion chamber where this whole thing takes place, combustion chamber. So we have three basic types of the combustion chamber. We have the multiple combustion chamber or the can types in the form of a can. We have the annular or basket type. 
It's in form of a basket. Then we have the can annular combustion chamber, which is a mixture of which is made up of both the can type and annular type. We shall see them in diagrams and we shall see how they're described. So the multiple we look at multiple combustion chamber or the can type. So multiple combustion chamber, the can type combustion chamber is typical of the type used in both the centrifugal and axial flow engines. It is particularly well suited for the centrifugal compressor engine. So the can type is mostly used in the centrifugal compressor engine. So if you're looking for a can type, if I tell you this is a centrifugal compressor engine, you very well know in your brain that it's a can type combustion chamber that is inside there. Then number of chambers will vary as few as two and as many as 16 chambers. Of course, we saw its other name is multiple chambers. So each of the contact combustion chambers consists of an outer case or housing within which there is a perforated stainless steel combustion chamber. That's high resistance. So each of the can type combustion chambers has an outer case or housing within which there is a perforated stainless steel combustion chamber liner. So in each can, in each chamber, you find an outer casing, but with a perforated chamber, the perforated liner. The outer case is divided to facilitate liner replacement. The outer case is divided. So the large section or chamber body encases the liner at the exit end, and the smaller chamber cover encases the front or the inlet end of the liner. So it has a large section of the chamber. It cases, it cases the liner at the exit end, and the smaller chamber cover encases the front. So the larger section is at the exit end, and then the smallest chamber is at the front or the inlet. Then the interconnector of flame propagation tubes are a necessary part of the can type combustion chambers. Each can is a separate burner operating independently of the other cans. Combustion is initiated by the spark plug igniter is spread. So we see here in this can type or the multiple, the interconnector, it has interconnector tubes and each one of them is separated by, has a separate burner. It is a burner independently and the combustion is treated by a spark igniter which spreads using the interconnector tubes. The spark igniters are normally two in number. They are located in two of the can type combustion chambers. So these spark igniters are two in number. They are located in two of the can type combustion chambers. So the rest of the chambers receive the ignis the, ig the frame via interconnected tubes. See? Construction of combustion chamber is providing means for draining and burn fuel. So we see here it also has intercon it also has some construction to drain out the excess fuel. <coughs> So we can see very well, this is a clear diagram about it, though it may not seem to be clear, but we saw that it's made up of multiple, multiple, multiple chambers, one, two up to 16, and we see that the, each section has stainless steel, then it has a perforations, and we can clearly see from this, and we go to the annular type combustion chamber or the basket type. This provides the most efficient use of volumetric space. It's a single concentric frame tube. It's a basket type or annular type combustion chamber. It has it uses efficiently the volumetric space and the concentric single concentric frame. Advantages of using the annular combustion chamber, we have 25% reduction in weight because we just have one section as a whole. 
circumferential pressure equalizing is greatly enhanced we have equalizing of the pressure is greatly enhanced so we have now we can see briefly how this is because we have only one we have one concentric frame tube and we have greater reduction in the weight and circumferential pressure equalizing that's the annular or the basket type combustion chamber we go to the can annular that's a combustion combination of all of these and that's can annular combustion chamber the supply of air to the frame tubes is made through a common air casing that is what is special with it primary air for combustion is supplied through individual air intakes so this is the special thing with can annular we have supply of secondary air to the frame tubes through a common air casing types of flow there are two types we have straight through we have reverse flow straight flow takes in air at the front and discharges it at the rear rear or at the exit or behind reverse flow air from the compressor flows around the chamber and entering from the rear so here we have the air coming through from the rear from the exit combustion gases flow in the opposite direction to the normal flow through the engine so you have the combustion gases they flow opposite to the normal flow through the engine so we see that the combustion gases flow from the chamber flow from the entrance to the rear the air from the compressor flows to from the rear so they meet in the middle and we have combustion taking place the air from the compressor flows around the chamber and entering from the rear so that's all we had for our topic and i think we can briefly have a recap about types of flow we have the straight flow through whereby air takes in air at the front and discharges at the rear reverse flow air from the compressor here we see the air takes in front and discharges at the rear reverse flow air from the compressor of course with the the band gas air from the compressor that's one we are using it enters through the rear it comes like this and enters through the rear and does the combustion we have our energy so thanks for listening that is professor kafaras from the africa university of Biomedical sciences the professor of gas turbine engines don't forget to subscribe to my channel i love you all stay tuned thank you